I'm DJ, the head of marketing at Entitled. First off, and now to introduce the speaker for the day, Pooja. Pooja has over eight years work experience in the technology sector. She's a global customer success leader at Entitled and helps deliver SaaS solutions to her customers in the industrial OEM space. She helps her customers translate complex data into actionable insights and recommendations, and also helps them create and execute solution roadmaps. She enjoys travel and uh, currently is based out of Paris. So with that, let me hand it over to Pooja. Thanks, DJ. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Thanks for dialing into our webinar. Uh, today, I'll be speaking about the most important, however, more often than not, not very well addressed topic of self-assessing if your organization is ready for spare parts demand based on the data that you have today. Next slide, please. So while recent economic indicators suggest that the U.S. manufacturing is showing some signs of recovery following probably more than a year of muted growth and decreased demand, industrials are still facing a lot of challenges like economic uncertainty, skill labor shortage, supply chain disruptions, and even price pressures due to inflation. So if you see the chart on the slide on the left, uh, I've taken this up from Industrial Machinery Digest. You can see that all regions are set to suffer a bit uh, with the tough 2024. However, for most of the part, the trough is going to be mild uh, and the expected CAGRs for APAC is in fact a very small growth of 2.9%, but US and Europe look, look like they're going to be declining uh, by 2.4%. So staying ahead of the curve in 2024, it does require understanding these trends and challenges. By adopting innovative tools, prioritizing valuable content, uh, you know, having integration with CRM tools and AI, sales and marketing professionals could enhance their approach and stay competitive in this ever-changing market. The very important steps for riding these trends to sales is determining the correct leads. And to help address these challenges, we see a lot of our customers and a lot of research also pointing towards customers investing in digital transformation. So projecting this into the future, the global maintenance, repair and operations market has attained a value of about $747 billion in 2023. And it's driven by the demand for efficiency across you know, industries. So with the rise of smart industry practices, the market is also expected to witness a further growth uh, in the next period up until 2032. It's going to be growing at a CAGR of 2.4%. Uh, so it just shows how important it is to reflect on how prepared you are for an impeding increase in the aftermarket services and sales and how you could scale it going forward as well. Next slide, please. So while you're reflecting on how good your spare data uh, is, let's walk through a specific situation that the sales team would go through. And I'm pretty sure all of you have seen this in your organization. So when a customer calls on an order de desk, it usually takes about 30 minutes to get through with the details of the customers. And this is even before an order is placed. So the customer calls, you would first want to look into details of the customer in your database. Next, you would ask the customer for the serial number that they would like to place the order for, uh, for the spare parts or for the service. Then you would also need to go through your order history of when that particular equipment was purchased, what was it, bring up PDFs of probably machine drawings or bill of material data for the serial number so you know what parts it is made up of. And maybe let's take a step even further. So maybe one of those parts in those PDFs is obsolete. So you have to go back into looking into some other data source to map it to a recent part number. So all of this 30 minutes of you and your customer time and cost is definitely not great for productivity. And it all happens because of the hurdles that is mentioned on the slide. So you'll have PDFs which are not, you know, passed yet or in a digital format where you can search for it. You don't have good bill of material in a standard format. Parts are not categorized properly. So all of these are the hurdles which you have to overcome to get clean data. Next slide, please. So improving data readiness, you know, if I have to uh, summarize it, it's of course going to help you with optimizing in inventory, 
you can plan better campaigns around marketing and sales you can drive sales strategies you can also define your digital transformation roadmaps and you can drive global pricing strategies too so right when we are on this slide i'd like to open up a poll uh, which will soon be coming up on your screen to ask you what are your bottlenecks in your spare parts data today and we'll just give it a minute or two Hey, DJ, do we have any answers come in? Are they flowing in? Great. I see the answers. Thank you. So I see a good mix uh, amongst all the options, but the most that I see are inconsistent part naming and categorization nomenclature and obsolete, obsolete part numbers in bill of material and or drawings. So uh, to be honest, these are issues that we've seen across all our customers. So I'm not surprised that it's within your organization too. And uh, I'll be going through a few more slides to talk to you about, you know, what we're doing today and how we could help you out. Uh, next slide, please. So, great. So through the results of the poll, you know, as I mentioned, it's not a quick fix and data transformation. It's definitely a journey. So unless you actually reflect internally or embark on starting that journey, that's when you realize that there are quite a few challenges you would have to get through. So that's the story of the iceberg usually that you don't know what's underneath the surface. So you would need to get through data quality, structuring the data right, making data consistent across various data sets, having decentralized data and setting a context for the data as well. So there are a lot of steps included. Next slide, please. So what you see on the screen is actually an example of the tool that we have for data profiling. So um, this is to get through all the challenges or rather identifying all the challenges associated with your parts data. So here's just an example of a data profile for one of our customers, in fact, that we worked. Uh, it's a proprietary tool. It's called Install Base Studio. And it's showing you problems within the parts data. So you can see categorization is a problem. There are multiple parts which actually belong to a single category, but they haven't been categorized yet. So there's no consistent nomenclature. And there are also some invalid and missing values within the data set. So this is exactly what you're gonna see when you start your journey uh, as well. Next slide, please. So if you haven't heard about us, I'll give you a quick introduction of what we do. We are experts in the equipment manufacturing industry. Uh, we've gained experience through working with 100 millions of manufacturing data records. So we've seen all the problems that we spoke about earlier. We have our team of experts who are also well-versed with the OEM business and their challenges. And we're faster than usual data-related projects because we've done this before. And for the same reason, we're also cost-efficient because we have purpose-built tools, one of which you saw as an example was a data profiling tool. And we have domain experience as well. So you wouldn't have to put in capital cost into purchasing any new tools or technologies for uh, projects with Entitle. Next slide, please. So walking you through the original call situation that we walked through, uh, where you get a customer call and you take 30 minutes even prior to order creation, Entitle services could help make this process more productive and more efficient by just boiling this down into five minutes. Let me let me walk you through that. So the customer calls, tells you the serial number they would like to place an order for. You have PDFs pre-passed and extracted data for you as shown in step one. So you know what part numbers make up that serial number already. But this part's data is also already profiled and cleansed as shown in step two and three. So even if there's an obsolete part number, it's already mapped to a newer part number. You even know the category and pricing for the same because you standardize the parts data not just at the categorization level, but even pricing as shown in step four. So you have everything in one single place now. 
And depending on where you are at with data maturity, we could also clean out your customer data and dedupe it, enrich it, map it to these serial numbers and proposed parts to be sold with them. So you don't need to wait for their calls and stick to having a more proactive approach than a reactive one. So 25 minutes of yours and your customer's time saved up definitely not is not just good for better productivity, but it's also cost efficient for you and saving you money. And all of this can now be automated to fit into your workflow. So it's not a one-time change. Uh, we basically do everything for you up until now, as well as going forward, we can uh, set up a Delta structure as well. Next slide, please. So let me walk you through one of our customer stories where data services around parts data actually help them in the transformation journey. So this is a real story that we worked with uh, on a customer with. Next slide. So um, our customer is in the billion dollar industry working in supply chain automation technologies uh, who were working on an implementation of a global parts pricing strategy. So what that means is they had non-standardized, unorganized parts data, which was a major hurdle for them because they had regional ERPs. They had in-house and vendor parts as well. And all of this resulted into not having a standardized way of numbering and categorizing parts, not having a standard pricing of the same part across regions and across vendors. And they also resulted into unclean data in terms of quality. So with our services, they were then able to consolidate various variations of vendor names. So for example, Siemens versus Siemens AG were shown separately in the data. Uh, just a very small example, we were able to mine other sources and fields for parts number data. We could standardize those formats. And then we also created categorizations based on those numbers and descriptions. So the end result of this was amazing for them. This resulted in 27% additional part numbers determined, which weren't done before. And 23% of duplicates were also uncovered, which were candidates for merging. So this in turn helped make their process more efficient, not just for the current situation, but also for the future. And they continued to do this project with us by you know, giving us various vendor data. Apart from this case study, there were, you know, a few other projects that we've done as well, which are still in progress, where we've had PDFs given to us for bill of material data, and we've already transformed it into a usable format, not just in Excel sheets, but we've given it to them in the entitled platform where the sales team can come in, search for the job number related to the uh, customer and get all the bill of material within the parts data, as well as you know the job numbers for that customer in our platform. So it's become very helpful. They're just starting to use uh, the solution as well. And it's been uh, a pretty quicker approach than what they were trying to do in-house. So yeah, that was all I had for you today. Uh, I'll open it up for questions and any remarks uh, that we'd like to talk about. But uh, right before I open it, I think the most important part is scaling your aftermarket business would depend on the foundation, which isn't just data, but it's clean data. And with a poor foundation, you I won't say you won't be able to do aftermarket business, you would, but it's only going to cost you more in terms of processes, resources, time, scaling. So you'd need a lot of investment because of all the above factors. So it's very, very important to have clean data, which we can help you out with. All right, Pooja. So, you know, we've got a few questions. I'm hoping you can answer those. In fact, we are I mean, we good, good on time. So uh, we have time for a bunch of questions. First off, uh, does the entitle have the ability to show a bill of material in a structured manner once you cleaned up uh, our data? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Uh, and maybe I'll put a bit more context to it. So the bill of material, when you talk about structured manner, uh, it could be number one in PDFs, let's just say, or it's somewhere sitting in your uh, you know, systems where it's in a hierarchy, but not really made flat. So yes, we do help out with that, uh, not just in terms of making it consistent and providing it to you in an Excel sheet. In fact, we'll be rolling out a feature which is related to the bill of material within our platform, 
And, you know, I'm pretty sure there should be a webinar lined up in the next few months, which would talk about the bill of material functionality within our platform too. So for a certain uh, item, it could be at an item category level. It could be at a serial number level. You'd be able to see the bill of material, which is your uh, built as, as well as what is serviceable in terms of your bill of material. All right. Thank you for that one. Um, how much involvement would a team need to have in such kind of projects? Uh, I, I believe they're referring to uh, resource allocation in terms of and resource uh, uh, rationing in terms of IT and business teams. Yeah, that's that's a great question. And I think for any project, you know, the project team involved is as important as the project result that you want. So usually on all our projects, we have a project coordinator from the customer side, someone from IT, usually it's just one person and a business person who can guide us in terms of what they want as the end result. This is the starting part of the project where three or four people make up the entire team. Then we go through an entire testing process where a few others are brought on uh, in terms of, you know, who will be actually using your solution. And post that is just rolled out to the entire group. So on an average, I've seen about uh, four to five in the initial stages testing. There are a few others brought on, but it never exceeds more than five people, I would say, for the project. All right. Uh, there's two more that have come in. Uh, do you have the ability to integrate with existing systems? Yes. So I'll uh, actually talk a bit more detail about it. Uh, what is going to happen is you are going to have some systems live, which you would want the data to be flowing in from, but you are also going to have some systems which are uh, no longer live or, you know, they're legacy systems. So you just have extracts of it. For your live systems, we do have the ability by which we can bring in data on a recurring basis. So uh, we could do that integration in place, as well as if you want to integrate this with your CRM, uh, we've done Salesforce integrations, we've done dynamic integrations. So we have the ability by which we can do an API integration and make sure that the data flows back into your system as well. The more important question I think which arises uh, probably as a base from this question is we do want a single source of truth and we just don't want to have four to five systems, uh, you know, that the salesperson has to go through or anyone has to go through, which makes complete sense. We are not at all planning to replace your CRM. Uh, that's one of the questions which come up. We want to be complementary to all the systems that you work with. So yes, we do integrate and make sure that happens. All right. And let's go for the last one. I don't see any other questions coming. So what is your ramp, a ramp up time for a project? Uh, how ERP and CRM implementation have taken years. I think that's, that's the truth. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Okay. So uh, yeah, I understand the pain of uh, ERP and CRM impl implementations because I myself have done uh, SAP implementation uh, some years back and it takes forever. It takes years. Um, with Entitle, it's quick. We're pretty agile. Uh, saying that the Entitle platform implementation takes about six to eight weeks, depending on the scope, but that's the usual timeline. And if you're talking about a services project, which has a bit more professional services included, uh, again, it depends on your scope, but I haven't seen projects going beyond three or four months at all. So we are very agile in our way. We have a team who is already uh, knowledgeable on what they're going to be doing because we're only focused on industrial data. All right. Uh, we have one more that actually came in um, two minutes ago. So maybe that's the last question for the day. Um, bill of material... Uh, there's a question and then there's the the facts, the setup, which is bill of material is a sole property of OEMs and we do share with our end customer. Do mm -hmm. we need to write complete bill of material or only recommended spares to end title as end user will buy only recommended spares? That's a great question. So we usually to create leads, we would need the recommended spares because that's the most important part that you would be selling to your end customers after 
selling your original equipment however a lot of our customers still want to keep the built up uh, equipment bill of material as well in case they want to refer back to not just for sales but if they're talking to a customer and they're just talking about you know the built up bill of material and what a specific part was which might have become obsolete which has now become serviceable so um, i think to answer the question the serviceable bill of material is something that we should have the built up bill of material is something that we can add but the serviceable is more usable for creating leads or you know for the sales team all right hopefully that answers that question uh okay so i think we made it uh yeah good as far as time is concerned um yeah there's the qr code to entitled.com and i think we also were were uh, displaying the qr code for the free trial for the product itself the entire product itself so uh, feel free to go ahead and try it out you will also see some buttons um, prominently displayed on the website that talk about uh, the free trials in case you want to give it a uh, whirl and uh, pooja thank you so much for you know simplifying all of this for uh, for all of us on the call today uh, thank you for taking the time out uh, folks to uh, to listen and to pooja had to say and what entirely had to say 